Hi everyone. This video is going to show you how to use Excel to compare two groups and to provide some basic statistics on those groups. So let's get started. Here we have an Excel spreadsheet and we've already got some data um, entered here. This set of data is from an experiment that compares a control group to a treatment group that's had something done to it. A great example might be um, animals and, and their activity that's been measured in light condition, bright conditions versus dark conditions, or a set of plants where we want to compare regular soil, so some default soil, with soil that's had added nutrients. So you'll notice that these are continuous variables. These are things that have been measured. And we're going to calculate some familiar statistics and introduce a couple of other ways to look at it. So probably the most common statistic that people use is the average or the mean. And Excel gives us a way to do that, to calculate that built in. So to do a formula in Excel, we start off with an equal sign. And then we're going to just type in average. We're going to open parentheses. And then we have to refer to what are called the cells. So the cells are all those little rectangles that have stuff in them. And each one can be referred to using the column, which in Excel are letters, and the row, which in Excel are numbers. So we can go to C2, and that directs us to the cell C2. If we put a colon, then it will use all the cells between that first one and the last one that we specify to calculate a value. So our whole data set goes up to C21. That's where we want to get an average. Done. What is an average? Remember that an average is the sum of all the obser observed values divided by the total number of observations. So we could do this um, in, a, in a way that's a little bit more familiar. So we could do the sum, and then we could again refer for our treatment group to D2, and then through D21, and we know that there are 20 values there, so we could divide it by 20. And we can check our work here, but you have to spell it right. And there you go. So we can see that those formulas both work the same. Sometimes the average gets pulled. And what I mean by that is if you have a really big or a really small number in that data set, the average winds up not really representing that data set in the way that you would like it to. And we can explore that in other ways at other times, but for right now, we should just know that sometimes that's not always a fair measure of the middle of that data set. Sometimes it's better to split the data set in half and to report the median, which is the value right in the middle of your data set where half of your values are above and half of your values are below. We could get complicated and sort this data set and go find it by hand, but Excel also provides us an easy way to get that. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to specify that series of cells, close it up, and we'll get the median. One of the nice tricks in Excel is that it's not hard for us to move things around and, and to get similar values. You've got to be very careful because this can go go badly very quickly, so always check your work. But we can grab this little square here and drag it down, and if Excel followed what we're trying to do, then it will adjust your, your formula accordingly. So in this case, it didn't. It just moved it down because we're not moving in the same direction. But it did give us the formula, it did give us the function. So let's just replace the cells. There you go. 
and we can go back and make sure that that happened exactly as we wanted it to. So our control is in column C, our treatment is in column D. Great. Sometimes we need to describe the variation in a data set. One of the ways that we can do that is by calculating the range. So we're going to do that for each one of, of our control and treatment data sets. So the range is just the smallest to the largest values. Here's your minimum. We're going to do the same thing. And let's do the maximum as well for both of these. So I'll do the minimum for treatment. And let's do the maximum. Here's our control. And we'll do max again for our treatment. And there we are. Now we've calculated the range for each of these. Another way that we might approach this is by reporting the standard deviation. The standard deviation is a really important way to describe your data. And if your data are normally distributed, it's got some really important information about how likely those, those observations are to fall in a certain part of what's called the distribution. So this is a really nice way to tell your, tell your readers about the variation in that data set. And what's nice is, again, Excel has a function built in that, that lets us do that. So there are two choices here. The standard deviation of the population, this is when you measure all the values out there, and that's all you care about, is the population of values that you measured. For us, we measured a lot of values, right? We measured 20, but there are more out there. We're interested in a group of, of observations that's well beyond that 20 values, right? We don't want to just stop at those 20. We want to say, in general, this is what happens when we, when we do this experiment, when we do this manipulation. So instead of doing the population one, we're going to do the sample one. So stdev.s. And this calculates your standard deviation for a sample of values. So a really good example of, of when you would use this is if you were going out to a field, right? And you, you want to know if this field has maybe taller corn than that field, right? So the, the field you're working on has had added nutrients. Okay, cool. Well, I measured 20 stalks of corn, but there are 20,000 stalks of corn out there. This is a good example of, of when you use stdev.s. So we do this the same way. Simple. And we'll do the same thing for our treatment. And then sometimes we want to know what the standard error. This is the standard error of the mean. And basically what it's doing is this is giving us a sense of, of essentially how close our sampled mean is to what the real mean of that population is if we sampled everything out there. Okay? So we do a little bit of an adjustment here. And we're going to take the standard deviation and we're going to divide it by the square root of, of the total number of observations. Basically, as we get more observations, we're likely to get closer to the real mean, the, the real mean for that population. So this is how we adjust for it. And so I'm just going to put in 20, because that's how many observations we have. And I like to use... Uh, parentheses to separate things out. And we do this little caret, and we raise it to the half power. So that takes the square root. And we can do the same thing over here. And in this case, dragging down is actually going to work because of the way that we're moving. 
So we're moving down instead of across. Here we go. So now we have K3 instead of K2. And that's going to give us the standard error for our treatment group. The last thing I want to do is I want to compare between those two groups and ask, are these two groups really different? Or could I have gotten these two sets of data by going out and, and sampling from the same group, right? Because every time you measure, every time you go and collect observations, you're going to get a slightly different number. And we want to know how likely it is that, that these really don't come from the same group. And so we're going to set what's called an alpha value. The alpha basically tells us how often are we willing to accept that these, these numbers really are not different when we say that they are. So we're willing to give that a 5% chance in a lot of cases. There's a lot of debate about this, and if you go on in science, you should really read about that. You should think really hard about it, and, and you should get some background in this. But know that the default for a long time in science has been alpha of 0 0.05, which is the proportion of times that we're going to call these two things different when they're really the same. So we're willing to accept that in 5% of the cases, whoops, not half, 5% of the cases, that, that there's really no difference between the groups, even though we say there is. And then we're going to run a t-test. And the function for that is just t.test. And then you have to give it an array. That array is just that list of cells that we did earlier. So we're going to give it the control first, C2 through C21. And then we're going to give it the treatment group, D2 through D21. And then it's going to ask us for some other information to do that test. And the t-test is just a way to, to compare two groups um, and, and to do that calculation that I was describing a moment ago. So the tails are testing whether or not we care about just one direction, so this one is going to be higher than that one, or if we just want to know if there's a difference. So I'm going to use a two-tailed um, distribution. So we're just looking to see if there's a difference at all. And then we have to choose the type of t-test. And there are a couple of different types here. There's a paired t-test, which would be great if, for example, we had observations on the same subject under two conditions. So I started off this, this video talking about an animal that maybe is observed in the light and the dark. If we use the same individual under light conditions and dark conditions, we can use a paired t-test. We're going to assume that that's not what happened in this data set. But instead, we want to compare two, two groups that are different individuals under different conditions. And so that gives us two more options. And those options are that we can assume that there's equal variation variance in those data sets, or that there's unequal variation variance in those data sets. We're going to assume that the variance is unequal in the two data sets. And this is important because assuming that it's unequal means that we're less likely to make a mistake and, and it's less likely to increase the chances that, that we're saying that they're different when they're really the same. So we want to be conservative in the sense that it's going to be a little bit harder for us to call these different. But we're not going to make a mistake and, and call them um, different if they're really the same. So we're going to do the unequal variance, a condition called heteroscedastic. So there we go. There's our t-test. There are options. So we need two groups of data, we need to decide whether it's one-tailed or two-tailed. 
Um, and for most of the things that, that I see people encountering, they're usually two-tailed. You just care that there's a difference, not that it's in a particular direction. And then usually we want to assume that there's unequal variance. This video is not going to tell you how to look for differences in variance. Instead, let's just assume that there's a difference because that's the safer bet. And then it gives you a number. That number is the p-value. And we compare the p-value to the alpha value. So this p-value looks a little funny, right? So it's got e minus 0, 7 at the end. <clears throat> and what that means is that we need to move the decimal point seven places to the left to get our real numbers. So this is what that really looks like. 0 0.123456. And then that's our first number, 0, 3, whoops, 0, 3, uh, 7, 7, 5. So this is what that number looks like. The p-value is the probability that those, those numbers are really the same, that, the, that our control and our treatment numbers really came from the same group of numbers. That is that there's no effect. And it's a very small chance, right? And so the idea that those two groups are going to be the same is the null hypothesis. It's a very small chance that those truly are the same, so we can reject our null hypothesis. And that's what we'll do. So we believe that our control and our treatment really are different. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's from our our treatment, there are all sorts of other things that could have happened, but statistically, we can say that those two groups of numbers are the same. So that's a quick introduction to how to compare these groups, how to run a very simple statistical test that will, that will allow you to separate out these groups. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you. Have a great day.